right, so let's prove that this language, which I'm going to call L, is uh, not regular, where W is a any string and 0, 1 star, and W has more 1s than zeros. So let's start the proof as we normally would. So we would suppose that L is regular. Then, of course, there exists a pumping constant P for L. So there exists a, I'm just going to shorthand it to call it uh, the variable P for L, just for simplicity. So now what we need to do is we need to pick a string that's in the language and at least P characters long. So I got to pick a string, um, there are many that I could pick, where W has more ones than zeros and has P characters in it. So we could just try to model a proof like zero to the n, one to the n, and let's choose uh, the, the following string. So let's pick uh, zero to the p, well, I gotta have more ones than zero. So let's pick, let's say, p plus one. Okay, so I could pick p plus two because that's more ones than zeros also. Um, I can't pick 0 to the p, 1 to the p, no plus 1, because then it would not be in this language. It's got to start in the language, and then we pump out of the language. Okay, so then what do we do here? Well, we got to look at all decompositions, as we always do. So we got to look at all decompositions of w into those three pieces x, y, and z according to the rules that x, y has length at most p and y is not empty. So y has at least one character. Well, since x and y have at most p characters and the first p of them are zeros, that means that x and y only have zeros in them. So uh, we know that x is going to be some number of zeros. Let's just call it zero to the alpha. So alpha is the number of zeros that x has, or just the length of x is the same thing. And y could be a totally different number of zeros. I have no idea what it is. I know that beta must be at least one because y has to be non-empty. And z is the rest of the string because there are only three parts. And just like the zero to the n, one to the n proof, we're gonna get something very, very similar. So note that z has all of the ones still, but this is the remaining set of zeros. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to choose an i or find a value of i such that the um, such that we leave the language. So let's let's pick a i. So let's uh, look at x, y to the i, z, and see what values of i allow us to leave the language. So what is this thing? So x, y to the i, z. Well, we're just gonna copy and paste the x bit. So that's zero to the alpha. We're gonna have i copies of the y bit. So that's gonna be i times beta upstairs. So i beta upstairs. And we uh, have one instance of z, so I'm just gonna straight copy this down. One to the p plus one. And like the other proofs, we have a section of zeros that we can just collapse all the exponents in. So the alphas are going to get killed off. And just like in the other proof, we're going to have P uh, plus I beta minus beta 1 to the P plus 1. And of course, this is only going to be in the language if the number of 1s is bigger than the number of zeros. So this is in that language L, if and only if P plus I beta minus beta, which is the number of zeros, is less than, strictly less than, P plus one. And let's make sure that it's the ones, not the zeros. Yep, more ones than zeros. So this is true if and only if I beta minus beta is less than one. So that means, so let's just uh, factor beta out. So that's going to be beta times i minus 1 is less than 1. And so, so what do we know? 
So we know that beta is at least one. So, so that guy is at least one. So the only way that this could be strictly uh, less than one is if we choose i to be one. Because if we pick i to be one, or, or, or I guess if we pick i to be zero, so one or zero allows this inequality to be true. But we want the inequality to be wrong so because we want to be out of the language. So let's pick i equal two. So, but if we pick i equal to two, then let's see, so that's one here times one. So then let's try to investigate what the string actually is. So if we look at what the string actually is, so the inequality is false and we're done, but uh, let's just actually see why. Well, if we pick i equal to two, we have one beta right here. And so we would have p plus beta, well, there's one beta here, and then p plus one. So we don't know what beta actually is, but we know that it's at least one. So that means that the number of zeros is at least as many as the number of ones. It might be more than the number of ones, but it cannot be strictly less. So you actually can, for this very similar reason, pick any reasonable number plus whatever, and you will still find eventually an i that works. Because if we pick, let's say, a thousand right here, p plus a thousand, well, it could be that beta itself is equal to one, but if I pick i to be a thousand and one, then that will mean that uh, this inequality will still be false in that particular scenario. So as because we're pumping in the zeros, then that allows us to pump out of the language just by putting more zeros in and not changing the number of ones. By the way, you can actually, um, if you screwed up, you actually in choose this other string, let's say uh, one to the P plus one, zero to the P. So now you're pumping in the zeros, uh, sorry, in the ones. Then if you put more ones in, then the number of ones is still gonna be more than the number of zeros. So you'll never leave the language there. But since we have exactly one more one than zero at the start, if we pump down, then we must take away at least one of the characters over here. And so we won't have strictly more ones than the zeros. This is what I call a straddling the borderline of being not in the language. This is barely in the language, one character away from not being in the language. So that's just something that I would recommend doing. Here, if we have ourselves pu putting more characters in, we want to put the part that we want to put more of in at the start because we can only take uh, one away in the worst case scenario um, versus adding as many into the string as we wanted to. So this was a lot easier than this one, but we get the same conclusion just done a different way.